and he told him to make a snake on brass mm -hmm. and put it on the tree. And That's he right. said, if you look up on it, you shall live. That's let's right. come on, let's take it down glory. Let's take That's it on it. down to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. If you look to the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ, you're dying in your sins. Mm -hmm. You have life yes. and life everlasting. Am look I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Now, I mean, I'm not getting into them no preaching here, but I'm mm -hmm. showing you some stuff today. Is that okay what That's I'm good. teaching? That's good. That's good. See, good. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the wilderness, mm -hmm. so shall the Son of Man be lifted up That's and right. draw all men unto me. Mm -hmm. So the rule was, the the rule was you got to look at that snake That's it right. didn't mean nothing but it meant that you looked to him because it was God that told him what to do so it was God that loved you that wrapped himself in a human body and hung on the tree that you that were being poisoned by the snakes and stuff of the world mm -hmm. you could look to Jesus and have life and life more abundantly right right that's right. another great miracle mm. do you see what I'm talking about another sure. great miracle the other great miracle was this. This was a great miracle. The Shekinah glory mm -hmm. hovered over the holies of holies. Amen. Now watch it. But when the Shekinah glory moved, they moved. That's right. As the glory moved, they moved. Move with so the I'm bringing it back to us. So as God leads us and tells us to do something, don't worry about his Shekinah glory or his Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in the way you should go. Amen. Amen. Are you all with me yes, now? Or am I, am yes, I breaking this book down to you? All right. Now. Like a little more. See, we're, we're breaking it down so you can understand it. Now, here's another thing. They, when they had to wander in the wilderness, it should have took them 11 days to get to the promised land. Right. But it took them 40 years. Because of murmuring and complaining. Because they mumbled and complained. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is it. They mumbled and complained. Now, you got your homework. All of you did good. But they mumbled and complained. And so every child that came up out of the wilderness that was above 21 never made it to the promised land. Over 600,000 died in the wilderness. All they did was went around in a circle. In a circle. Mm -hmm. But every so often, now watch it. I want you to hear the Hebrew. Every so often they went to the place called Elam. Mm -hmm. It was a desert where there was palm trees. Right. Water. They got to stop and rest. But did you notice what I said about the very first two lines of that word? E-L? Elam. El, like El Shaddai. El is God. El, God with us. It was yeah. a place of refuge. Elam mm. is a place of refuge for the Lord. soul. God, Lord. when you've been through all hell and everything is breaking loose on you, and it seems like everything is coming down on you, mm. God's got a place of refuge called Elam, E-L, and He's right there to help give mm. you the water and the food that you need to help you keep Lord. going on in this wilderness. Because like we used to sing a song, how did you feel when you came, came out, out of the wilderness? wilderness. That's right. Mm. <laughs> And then Paul wrote and said, and reached back and took it, and reached back and used some of it and said, our wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I making well, sense? Yes, sir. I'm breaking down Exodus for you. Is this all right? Would mm -hmm. you clap? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or am I above you? Mm -hmm. You're above me. See, I'm, try I'm above you? No, I said, she said. Oh, okay, but, but if you be in my class, you have to, now, if I go too fast, stop me. I slow down. Mm -hmm. But I'm showing you some beautiful right. parts. Mm -hmm. See, and didn't they, let's go to another thing. They murmured mm -hmm. and complained what you did, what you wrote. Mm -hmm. Quail. Right. The they wanted some heaven. meat. Mm -hmm. They wanted some meat. Am I right? Yes, God sir. said, fine, I'll give them meat. Mm -hmm. they get, he gave them so much quail. <laughs> Every day, daily If they had so much quail, they were getting sick of it. But what's the main, what is the penalty for the quail? Over 30,000 died with it in their mouth. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. So sometimes we ask God for something, and God will tell them, you know. Mm. And they you keep They on. overindulged. Huh? They overindulged. Yeah, it. they overindulged, and they died. Mm. So sometimes we ask God for something, and God tells us no. Keep and asking. we keep on begging him. Mm -hmm. And we keep on begging him, and we keep on begging him, and my right or wrong, and so finally right. God said, okay, here you are, daughter. 
And then when all hell breaks loose, you gonna say, "Oh God, oh God, no oh God!" Said, "See, I tried to tell you something, right. but you want to open the door and get ahead of me." Mm. That's what, that's the way with, with King Saul that they told him, "Look, okay, I'm I'm gonna give those clowns a king. Okay. They wanted yeah. king right. so bad, but but God warned him. I'm gonna tell you everything that king gonna do on the negative side. I'm gonna tell you what he gonna do now." That's right. Mm -hmm. see? And See, so what I'm trying to explain to you is what I'm trying to show to you in the book of Exodus. Are you all following me? I'm mm -hmm. breaking this book down for you some today. So as you read the synopsis of it, you can understand it. And if you don't have a synopsis, daughter, I'll give you one. That's the outline of the book. Mm -hmm. But we deal with it in the theological forms, and that's what I'm dealing with today, the mm -hmm. theological, and some of the themes. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. And when we look at it, they got manna. Who ever heard of living off bread and water for 40 Man. years? And, and then look at the other great miracle. What is it? <laughs> look at the other great miracle. Man. And it may sound funny to you, but you start coming along, and as you walk and your feet grow, your shoes grow. That's right. As you walk along, you don't find out where they got the extra. Their dresses never rotted out. That's right. Their shoes never wore never out. Wore How many of us can go 40 years without? Without shoes. Lord now, I've been wearing that. the same shoes, some of you notice. I got more than one pair of shoes. Now, believe me, mm -hmm. I have. But I've been wearing this one pair of shoes for the last two months. But I because wear out, it's so. where I tore up this knee. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to get them on and off. Do you yes, understand? Because mm -hmm. my wife has put my sock on for me. I can't get my leg down. Yes, sir. But they, they did try to wrap around my head last mm -hmm. week. Because yeah. I didn't hardly think I was going to make it. But, but God moves in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But bread and water for 40 years and didn't suffer one sickness mm. one Lord think of that That's heavy. 40 years they lived off of the bread the manna that's what he gave them mm -hmm. it's about the size of a biscuit like at Hardy's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then if they tried to keep it it would, it would yep. dissolve and go to nothing that's right and they could bake it they, they could do whatever they wanted with it mm -hmm. but whoever heard them no, no, no leukemia no cancer Lord, no, 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 uh, 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 rickets, no shingle, yeah. come on, no type Lord. sickness mm. for four years. And then when they went across, when they went across Jordan, they were ready to fight. Mm -hmm. They were ready then. That's right. See, so, so the thing what I'm saying to you is that God has so many miracles in the book of Exodus that you can take it from here to there. Mm -hmm. And if you notice one thing, if you study Paul, especially Paul's writing, because he wrote, I think it's what well, we say, 12 to 13 books. Mm -hmm. They don't know for sure if it's Hebrews, but it sounds like a Jewish man writing it. Some claim it to Apollo, mm -hmm. and some to, to Paul. But I kind of lean to Paul more than I do to Apollo. It looks like Pauline to me. Yeah. Huh? It's more Pauline to me, too. Yeah, it's yeah. more Pauline mm -hmm. writing than it is to Apollo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea is that if you look at Paul, Paul reached back. That's all they have is the Old Testament. Paul mm -hmm. reached back and took a lot of things from the Old Testament and built a New Testament around it. Built a New Testament around it. And preached to them about it. Mm -hmm. If you look at it. That's why I said that when I got into Hebrews that I felt that he was more Jewish a Pauline epistles you wrote because mm -hmm. he talked about the high priest so much. Yes, yes, sir. He did. He talked about the the, mm -hmm. the, the place like he did. Right. You got your homework, daughter? Mm-hmm. Huh? She said, mm-hmm. I love it. You ain't got it? I don't know. I'm sorry, I was sick. Okay, you all second. right, there's a lot of men got it. So I'm gonna give you one I'm gonna give well, we'll get it, I'll get it in on you, but we got it all. But we're covering a lot of it right now. Uh, but the idea is what I'm saying to you is when you study the book of Exodus, you studied in the book of Genesis, you got the first 11. I'm going back, is that okay? Mm -hmm. The first 11 was creation and redoing of creative man, everything. Mm -hmm. The 11 to the end of Genesis was the patriarch age. Yes, sir. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Patriarchs. So that was your patriarchs. Mm -hmm. Now these patriarchs comes over into, we're coming into Exodus, which is a word from ek, which means to come out of. Mm -hmm. It means to come out of. Right. So, but when you get in Exodus, they come out of Egypt. Egypt symbolically is the world. 
Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Egypt symbolically, and don't all get your feet drawn up underneath your table Sin. now, mm -hmm. shows slavery mm -hmm. as the devil made slaves out of us. Right. That's it. Are you with me? Well, Am I making it clear? Yes, he sir. made a slave, some of us, mm -hmm. to dope. That's right. He made a slave, some of us, to alcohol. Mm -hmm. Some of us is pedophiles. Mm -hmm. People, come on. Service all all them other, all type of moralities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's go. That's right. We were slaves to that. Mm -hmm. But then God sent a deliverer. Glory. Which was drawn out of the water. Mm -hmm. Which was Moses. That was right. the name she gave him, Moses. Mm -hmm. Pulled him out. He was a Levite. Right. He belonged to the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. He was after the priest, priesthood of, of it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying about it is that Jesus, I'm going to bring out something here now. It may be a little bit deep, but you may not agree with me. Not only was drawn out from the womb, which is the issue of blood and water and spirit, mm -hmm. when a baby is born, you know that. Mm -hmm. You got the issue of the water, the breaking of the water, the blood, and then you got the cry, which is the spirit. Lord. Jesus was drawn out of water when he was pulled up out of the river Jordan after John baptized him because the boy, the voice from had the Holy Ghost descended on him, and the voice spoke to him and said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. So as he was pulled up out of the water from the river Jordan, went out into the wilderness, met the devil head on, as Moses met Pharaoh head on, Jesus met the devil head on, mm -hmm. right? And when he came out, then he could say, now I'm going to deliver you children out from the world Glory of Egypt. Thank How? You. By my blood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll become the pasture lamb because before the Thank foundation you. of the world, I was being predestinated as a lamb. Mm -hmm. Does it? Does the two symbolically come together? Or yes. you see, when yes. you study this thing and you get your exegesis in there mm -hmm. and you dig it out, mm -hmm. You, you follow him, then you see it, see. So as Moses was drawn from the water, Jesus came up out of the river Jordan. This is my beloved son in whom I'm in him. That's my boy. Mm -hmm. He's got my traits. Right. Like a father could say, that's my son or that's my daughter. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost come down on him like a dove. And then he went on into the winters, met the devil, and destroyed him on the flesh, the eyes, and the rest of the three main points. And came back out of there and started preaching, mm -hmm. setting up his kingdom. The Jews didn't want him. If you look at it, after Moses killed that man, they, they, and he finally let him know that he was not an Egyptian, but he killed that man, hit him in the sun. His mm -hmm. own people hated him and made him run for his life and went over into Midian and met Jethro. Mm -hmm. His father-in-law right, right. met met married Sephora, which was an Ethiopian girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? right, right. I'm bringing his history, and then he God sent him back down to Egypt. So it was when Jesus came out, he tried to set up his kingdom to Israel. That's what the book of uh, the Sermon on the Mount was. He laid down his thesis, his doctrine, what he was going to have for him. So it was in the book of Exodus. You have three points. I told you what they were. One were the law. Mm -hmm. You remember? I told you there was three points in the book of Exodus mm -hmm. that he gave them. There was three points. He gave them. He gave to Moses to give back to his people. The law gave. Mm -hmm. That was the Ten Commandments. Right. Now listen to this. The civil law mm -hmm. and the ceremonial law. He gave them the Ten Commandments. Amen. And the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament was just a pre-shadow. They could live a certain amount of it. Mm -hmm. A certain amount of it for salvation. That's the difference between their salvation and the Old and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. There was laws there that could help them come, but then they still had to depend upon the blood of bulls, goats, and heifers. Amen. Amen. But he gave them the Ten Commandments. Then he turned around and gave them civil laws. Mm -hmm. How to live as civilized people. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Right. And then he gave them the final law, which was ceremonial law. Which means you had to offer up the turtle doves, the, 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 the lamb, or whatever it was. That was the three laws that he gave them into 
the uh, Exodus. And if we, if we could follow them in a little way, if we look at those Ten Commandments and break them down, we could put them in our country and in our world today. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. Boy, we got a lot of gods floating around out there. Mm -hmm. Like somebody come to me and ask me, how can you afford that car? I said, 30 days at a time. Every 30 days I make a payment, they let me have it another 30 days. See, but it ain't no God to me. Mm -hmm. Easy come, easy go. God gave it to me, God could take it back, and I wouldn't worry about it. See, but whatever you get, I, I always remember what Bishop Golder said to you, whatever you get, be proud of what you got. If you got the Holy Ghost, be proud that you got the Holy Ghost. Because mm -hmm. God didn't have to give it to you. Come on, let's be honest. Amen, amen. If you've been baptized, Jesus' name filled with the Holy Ghost, God didn't have to let you be. Here's the revelation of truth. Am I right or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Be proud that you're a baptizer. And if he let you become a Jesus only, thank you. If he, if he let you become a Jesus only, thank him for it. If that's what they were calling it. But I'm not Jesus only. I believe in three, but not the way they do. Amen, amen, amen. I believe in a Father, I believe in a Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost. As a Father, he, He's a Creator. As a Son, He's a Redeemer. As a Holy Ghost, He's a Regenerator. That's right. But the three are one. And when I look up in heaven, John said, I saw one. One. He didn't say, I see three thrones. Or two. That's right. Isaiah said, I looked up and saw the Lord high and lifted up. He Amen. didn't see three thrones. We were made in His image. You look in the mirror, you don't see three thrones. See? Now, I'm see just bringing this out. But now, Amen. this is what I'm trying That's to show it. you. This is some of the major theological themes that I was bringing out in the mm -hmm. book of Exodus right now. That's the first part. The 430 years under Pharaoh. The rescue, that was redemption, the Passover. When he said, I want you to take the blood. Put it above the door. Mm -hmm. I see the blood. Not under your feet. Yes, sir. Up the Hello. Mm -hmm. This way, this way, and that yes, way. Mm -hmm. And then here's the thing he is, while you're under the blood, he didn't tell them to go in and pull the covers over their head. Mm -hmm. Am I right or wrong? No. Now, if I'm wrong, tell me. He didn't tell them. Nobody said, be Roast the lamb and eat it. Mm. Eat the lamb. And if you don't, if you can't do it, we all come together. But get under the blood. Mm -hmm. mm. And when the death angel started walking down through Gosh, down through Egypt and Gosha, mm. if he didn't see the blood, he made himself welcome. But you died. Jesus. I don't care if it was a cat or a dog or what it was, the firstborn died. Mm. When God says something, he means what he says and says what he means. That's right. Yes. Am I making sense here? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm watching my time. Got plenty of time. So the idea is what I'm saying about. So when he went down and they got under the blood, over you and around you, mm -hmm. and they and God told them, be prepared to come out. Mm -hmm. When you hear the shofar or the horn from mm -hmm. the ram blowing of it, right, come out. And here was an unusual thing. Here was a miracle. One miracle some of you missed, and I and a lot of us miss it. I'll tell you what it was. Moses was under the blood, wasn't he? While the death angel come through. And the death angel was still moving. That was a miracle. When Pharaoh himself. called yeah. him and he walked out from under the blood and went in and talked to Pharaoh and death couldn't touch him. That's right. Mm. Glory. That's glory. Miracle, come on, am I right or am I wrong? He went Amen. up and talked to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, tell that folk, get out of here. That's right. And when they got ready to walk out, as we talked about a few weeks ago, the dogs even had to shut their mouths up. They couldn't mm -hmm. even bark. That's right. And as they came out, they give them all, I didn't say bari, that ain't the correct Hebrew. Bari, that means the women give them all the gold and stuff they could use. Mm -hmm. But here was the thing, that when the shofar or the trumpet sounded, mm. they stepped out from under the blood and started marching out of Egypt. Mm. Are you understand me? Mm -hmm. yes, all right, we're in Egypt today. Ah, mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. And the blood is applied to our hearts. Yes, it is. And, and we're waiting for the trumpet. We're waiting for the trumpet to sound Thank so we can come up out of Egypt. <laughs> yes. In my right arm. See what I'm talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's found in the book of Exodus. That's the Passover. Lord. And that's it when Jesus mm -hmm. says, when they say, when I see the blood, I'll pass I'll over pass you. Over. What can mm -hmm. wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of blood Jesus. Jesus. Bishop Haywood said it better. I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from Calvary. It's breaker sweep over my soul. Mm. 
Aren't you so glad that you're, yes. you're under the blood? Amen. It's over you, around you, yes. and you've been eating the lamb. You've been eating mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus Christ or his spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Come on, which is the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Am I right? You yes. eat it, and what are we waiting for? In a moment, and the sound, the trumpet sound, and we that are alive shall be caught up with the dead, and this mortal shall take on immortality, mm -hmm. and we'll see him as he is. Amen. I believe we'll see him with the nail print hand. Yes, we will. Because the Bible said us. in the book of Zechariah, yeah. right? they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. But every eye shall I see believe my huh? I remember my former pastor saying that. Yeah. He said that, um, he said those nail prints are there. He yeah. said they will be there throughout the They'll be there. They should he be said, right in here. And he said, you will see them. Yeah, yeah you'll, see you him. Him, you'll see them. I believe you'll see them. I believe you'll see them. This is me. I believe you'll see the scars from where the crown was. Lord have mercy. Because they said this same Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. This same. Glory. Glory. As you look at him, he showed him his hands. Mm -hmm. He showed Thomas his side. Yes, he did. Amen. Amen. I'm sure his back looked like a plowed field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my right or wrong, high glory. But when he comes back, I believe we'll recognize, we'll see everything that he went through. That's why I'm saying it. Everything uh -huh. that he went through. I think we'll see the thorn marks. Yes, we will. You understand me? Uh -huh. I believe we'll see his back that looked like it was plowed by the field, and by Jesus. his stripes we are healed. Mm. I believe we'll see the nail into here, which made his hand become like a claw, and he could hold you in his hand, and he, you couldn't get out. Lord have mercy. And when he comes back, I believe no we'll see him, uh -huh. and we'll sing the glory. Mm. See, that's the Passover. That's uh -huh. found in here. Are you with me now? See? Yes. And, and, and then the guidance of the ten plagues, how that he can't conquer their gods by the ten plagues. The laws, we just got to them. See, the nation of truth and salvation. He showed them the truth, and he showed them salvation. Mm -hmm. He let them know who he was. That's the truth. I am hero Israel. I am the Lord thy God. Only one. Is that what he told them? One. And he said, what is your mm -hmm. salvation? Your salvation is by the sacrificial of a lamb mm -hmm. or a burnt offering. And what I loved about God, now some may not accept this, uh, uh, but I do. I don't believe there were any different particular, uh, one particular sacrifice. I don't believe that. Uh, I, well, there were certain sacrifices. I, let me clarify myself. There was times they did have certain one type sacrifice. That was the atonement when they had the two goats. Uh -huh. But let's go back. God set it up so that Brother Ed or Sister Joyce over here, rich lady, her family, I'm just being nice now. I'm using uh -huh. it for an example. Right. She got pretty good money. Uh -huh. So they say, you bring a heifer. You ain't getting uh -huh. by cheap. Uh -huh. right. Ezra and you may be kind of rich. You go bring a lamb. Uh -huh. Hello. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. Huh? To whom much is given, much is required. You bring it to the altar. Right. And kill it. He requires more uh -huh. for your sins. He's given more. For your sins. Okay. Uh -huh. That's for your sins. That's right. a sin offering. Sin offering. Sin offering. Right. Then you got you come along uh -huh. and you're kind of poor. Uh -huh. And you can't afford much, but you take some meal uh -huh. and mix it with a little bit of oil. Right. And you give it to God because you was humble. Glory. Uh-huh. Still or turtle doves, I'm sorry, you'd bring uh -huh. a couple of turtle doves. Turtle doves, right. But these two are poor. Uh -huh. So what do they do? They go to your field, and Ezra's field, and your field, mm -hmm. and they can get some grain. Uh -huh. And you can't say nothing about it because you've got to lay your part of it. Uh -huh. And then they can come to your area and get some olive, olives to crush some oil. Uh -huh. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then you take and get the grain and the oil and you mix it and it becomes a meal offering. Uh -huh. And you bring that before God. Are you understanding? Uh -huh. Humbly. 
right. as the best you can afford. Mm -hmm. And he'll accept that just as well as he accepts her. That's it. Amen. Are you understanding? Not equal giving, so equal it is sacrifice. that mm -hmm. there's no big sin or little sin in God's sight. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense here today? Yes, For yes, we sir. all have sinned and come short well, of the oh, glory yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. I might have been the biggest dope head and pusher out there on the streets, and you may have never done nothing in your life but sleep on the church bench, raised up on the church bench, lived in church. Come on, let's be honest. Amen. And Amen. did all that. But be, but you had to be baptized in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You had to have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing for me. I could be baptized in his name. I could be filled with the Holy Ghost, and God don't show no respecter of person. Amen. Amen. Are you mm -hmm. with me? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you yes. with me? This yes, is part of truth and salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, we're coming down close to the end. We're going to quit here a little bit because we try to still get prayer in if we can upstairs. Yes, sir. If not, we at least have it down here. We got, we got 10 Exodus minutes. shows us 430 years of bondage. Mm -hmm. Exodus 1 8, Pharaoh did not know Joseph. Religious, there were idols throughout all Egypt. I couldn't name them all, but in Goshen, the children of Israel trusted God, the true God. Music was played in the temple by the priest of Egypt. Covenant, they believed in their God. He would bring them out. I'm talking about Israel. These are all in your synopsis. They never kept up. They kept faith and prayed and moaned that God would bring them out. Could you imagine? For 430 years, they prayed and moaned, and we some of us can't pray of day without prayer. Just so God is good. Lord. They never kept up. They held on to their father's faith. They believed in one God, and Moses sent to deliver them. Now, that is mostly of Exodus. Now, I got something for you. I'm going to see if I can give it to you. And we're going to deal with them. Uh -huh. The six theological conclusions found in the book of Exodus. Uh -huh. Exodus shows us what God did for his people after coming out of bondage. Now we're going to break them down. Uh -huh. And when we do, we're going to be pretty close to finishing up Exodus. Except for one thing. We're going to get something good, real going, real good. And I'm going to try to get some blackboard or I'm going to try to get a chart. We're going to get ready to start into the tabernacle. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I really want to see that. And that is going to be a good study. You better bring a notebook. Amen. Because I'm not going to print off a lot. Because yes, it costs us too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. I'm not trying to be smart. This man is printing a lot off for me. And he tell you, I wore out one printer, didn't I? I had to go buy a new one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not crying. But what I'm saying is, that's it. All right.